Chinese emperors have done things that make your most stupid moments look reasonable. Today, we're gonna talk about the idiot that caused the fall of the Western Zhou Dynasty, Zhou Youwang. When was the Zhou Dynasty? The Zhou Dynasty was the dynasty immediately after the Shang, and it is known for its longevity. The dynasty lasted for 789 years. Wow. The Zhou Dynasty is split into two parts, the Western Zhou Dynasty and the Eastern Zhou Dynasty. The Western Zhou Dynasty lasted from 1046 BC to 771 BC. The Eastern Zhou Dynasty lasted for another 500 years, but its power gradually declined throughout the wars fought in its latter years, during the Spring and Autumn and Warring States periods. By the time the Zhou Dynasty officially ended, it had barely any real power. The Zhou were considered the pinnacle of Chinese bronze working. While the Shang also made bronzeware, the Zhou perfected it. The Eastern Zhou Dynasty also saw the birth of three major philosophies, Confucianism, Legalism, and Taoism. By the end of the Zhou Dynasty, the Chinese were also using a form of writing that is very close to today's Chinese, evolving from the oracle scripts used during the Shang. The Western Zhou Dynasty was more powerful and influential than the later Eastern Zhou, though they were both ruled by the same ruling family, thus the combined Zhou Dynasty. So how did the Western Zhou Dynasty fall? What was the difference between the Western and Eastern Dynasties? Both of these questions can be answered by looking at the final emperor of the Western Zhou Dynasty before it converted to the Eastern Zhou, Zhou Youwang. Zhou Youwang was born in 795 BC, and he came to power in 781 BC. He was an idiot. Like all bad emperors or sky kings, he only cared for himself and not the citizens of the empire. The economic situation in the empire was already deteriorating, but instead of trying to figure out a solution, Zhou Yuang increased taxes instead. He also loves a government official named Guo Shifu, who just so happened to be a bozo. He listened to most anything Guo Shifu said. Also, he tried to attack the western barbarians and lost. Also, he didn't care about anything but women. He spent many a day holed up with his various concubines. Finally, a good government official named Bao Xiang had had enough. He told the king that he should be better. Obviously, Zhou Youwang didn't listen. Bao Xiang was thrown into jail. A few moments later. Now, his family was getting desperate. They knew about Zhou Youwang's obsession with women, so they found a beautiful girl adopted her as a daughter, taught her how to sing and dance, and sent her off to marry Zhou Youwang. Zhou Youwang was immediately enraptured with her, making her one of his queens. Bao Xiang, of course, was released from prison without a second thought. The girl, whose name was now Bao Si, was extremely beautiful, but she never smiled. Personally, if I had been taken from my family and shipped off to serve an idiot king, I wouldn't be too happy either, so I get why she was depressed. She quickly became the king's new favorite though, and Zhou Youwang made it his mission to make her laugh. He tried everything, but nothing worked. She wouldn't even crack a smile. So he decreed, whoever can make Bao Si smile would get 1,000 pieces of gold. Guo Shifu, ever the greedy guy, wanted that money. So he gave Zhou Youwang a plan. Now, some more background. During the Zhou Dynasty, the Western barbarians were a problem. In order to protect the capital of the dynasty, the Zhou built fire towers in a line along the border. When the barbarians prepared to invade, the king could light a tower, and this would set off a chain reaction, the soldiers in the other towers lighting their flames as well. These flames would alert the nearby dukes to the danger, and they would bring their armies over to protect the king. These towers were the centerpiece of Guo Shifu's plan. He thought it would be a good reason for the king to light the towers for no reason at all, so that the dupes would hurry over, 
for no reason at all, which hopefully Balsu would find funny. The king thought this was a great plan. He took his beloved Balsu to the fire tower and lit the fire. The other towers, seeing the flame, quickly lit theirs too, and the dukes, seeing the flames, rushed to the king's aid. Instead of finding barbarians, however, they were greeted by music as the king was partying on top of the tower. Balsa thought this was hilarious, so she couldn't resist smiling. The king was ecstatic. He told the dukes, Good work, everyone. Now you can all go back home. As you may imagine, the dukes weren't happy. Since it had made Balsa laugh, Zhou Yu Wang decided to do this over and over and over and over until eventually the dukes wouldn't come anymore, not wanting to be called for no reason. Then the real barbarians came. They attacked, scaring Zhou Yu Wang out of his wits. Panicking, he sent someone to light the tower. The tower was lit and the signal was carried outwards. The dukes saw the flame, but Instead of coming to Zhou Yu Wang's aid, they said, Nope, must be another plank, and stayed where they were. Zhou Yu Wang was killed, and the capital city was sacked before reinforcements finally arrived. Zhou Yu Wang's son was placed into power, and he decided to move the capital out east, as the economic state of the country couldn't rebuild the plundered city. This is why the Zhou is split into two halves. The time when the capital city was in the west is called the Western Zhou Dynasty, and the time after the capital was moved east is named the Eastern Zhou Dynasty. So, what did we learn from this story? The answer is, don't be a bozo, and don't lie like what Zhou Yu Wang did. He was the original boy who cried wolf. It didn't end well. <laughs>